create and execute Windows command files bubble sort function. This video shows a bubble sort written in batch code. A future video will show how to modify it for sorting a file based on one of the record fields. Be very careful to follow the code syntax when adapting this code for your own use. Batch code syntax is very complicated when using arrays inside of for loops. How to copy the function in test driver code from my web page was described in the previous video string input function. You are watching a Tom's Tech Notes video. If you like this video, please wait until you are finished watching it, then click my name, Thomas Wallace, to visit my channel page. A welcome video will play to describe my other videos. Background. What is a bubble sort and why use it? When sorting, items bubble through the list until they reach their final position. It's one of the easiest sorts to program, and it works perfectly well for sorting 100 or less items if you're using batch code, which is a slow way to do it. Unfortunately, it's an n squared sort. That means if you increase the number of items 10 times, the sort time goes up 100 times. On my fairly fast computer, it sorts 100 items in 9.5 seconds. 1,000 items would take about 1,000 seconds or 17 minutes. For large lists, use what's called a quick sort, which is an n log n sort. Sorts that would take several hours with a bubble sort take a few seconds with a quick sort. Quick sort is much harder to program. For those of you somewhat new to batch programming, I need to remind you of something. Batch code doesn't really have arrays, but we can pretend it does. Actually, if you see something like x bracket 1 bracket and so forth, they aren't elements in an array in the sense of a regular programming language. They're actually unique names. The brackets are part of the name and the numbers 1, 2, and 3 are part of the name. So you have a variable called x bracket 1 bracket and another variable called x bracket 2 bracket. They're not connected. With the way batch code processes its variables, you, you, are, you are able to pretend that you're dealing with arrays, but it does make it very complicated in certain situations in the code. Here's the version of the sort that is an internal function and it's in the same file with the test driver. I'm not really going to describe what it does because the one with the separate external functions is pretty similar to this one. Well, okay, now let's move on to the uh, version of the sort that uses an external sort function called from the test driver. Here is the test driver for the external sort function which is in its own batch file and it's called sortit so you call it with the name sort it and remember the dot bat is not required although that is the file name for the function that has the sort it function in it this is just a label it, it doesn't have to be the function name it's just the label I use inside of the function the name of the file again is sort it dot bat so what this does I have a parameter at the top how many items I want to put in the array that I'll be sorting and then I save it because I count this one down and I don't want to screw up the original value. So what it does, it goes through a for loop, this format, this is the start, the increment, and the ending value, and what it does, it sets the array element, remember these aren't really array elements, but we're going to talk about them as though they were, it sets the first array element to the, a, this random this expression that uses this random function available from batch code and again that generates a number in the range of 1 to 100 and you do need as I mentioned you do need the exclamation points otherwise you get the same number each time through the loop so this will generate a random number then it will list it that's just so I can watch what the sort is doing. So it, it's going to give me a list, one, one item per line, of the original array before sorting. Then I echo the start time before it starts sorting. This is a system function, percent time percent. 
Then I call the sort function and pass it parameters, number of items in the list, and the name of the array that the items are in. So it goes down to the function, copies the first parameter into the variable called last in the function. Remember this is an external function, separate batch file. Then it copies the name of the array into the variable x. When I'm debugging, I started by printing out the first 10 items. Right now that's commented out, so it's not going to display anything. If you want to really see how the sort works, change it to sort 10 items, uncomment this line so it'll print out the whole array if, if there's only 10 items in it, then sort it, and this is set up, and this is commented out, to echo 10 the, the whole array after each pass through the sort routine. So you'll be able to watch the bubbling, how the items bubble through. I'll uh, execute this in a second, and then I'll, and I'll describe that bubbling process. First of all, what it does, it compares two adjacent items in the list, starting with i is 1. So it's going to compare the first item in the list with the second item in the list. J is I, that i plus 1, so j will be 2. So it compares the first two items in the list. If the first item is greater than the second item, it interchanges those two items because, of, because the way we have to simulate arrays and the fact that we're in a for loop, you have to use a call set to get the value out of the array here. Set will not work. So it interchanges the two items. So it copies, I've already saved the two elements in these two variables. So what it does, it copies the, the one I saved from the second item. It puts it in the first position of the array and it puts the one I copied from the first position of the array into the second position of the array. And then it sets a flag that says, on this pass through the sort, I did move something. Because that's a shortcut. Because before I go through each pass of the sort, I set new move to no. Then if I ever do move anything on that pass, I set it to yes, and then I keep sorting. But if I don't move anything on a pass through the sort, I'm done because everything's where it belongs. So at the bottom after that, first I show the array after that pass through the sort. Remember the sort's not done, it just did one pass. And then if I moved anything, if I didn't move anything I'm done, if I did move anything, I find out did I just compare the last two items in the list? If so, I'm done. But if not, then I go back and go make another pass through the loop. So what I do, let me execute it so I'll have something to show you as, as we're uh, describing it. So again, here's the list of random numbers before the sort. There's that time mark. Now it finished the sort. Remember it takes like nine and a half seconds. There's the end time. So notice that time it took a little under 12 seconds to do the sort. And that does vary. It just depends on how those random numbers laid out. Now here's the sorted array. I'll run it with the, uh, the bubble turned on, the, the display turned on. That way you can see what it's uh, actually doing in the sort. And I will also change it to 10 items so you'll see the whole array. So I change it to sort a 10 item array. And I turn that debug print on so you can see what's happening. Here's the original array. Here it is listed across. What it does, it compares these two items. If the one on the left is greater than the one on the right, it switches the two, which would put 97 over here. Then it compares 97 and 83, and it would switch those, which would put 97 over here. In other words, you get the idea. So what happens is, the first pass through the sort, the largest item moves all the way over to the right end. Other items move depending on whether the item beside them was larger or smaller. But you're guaranteed that the largest item is now on the right end. After the second pass, you're guaranteed that the second largest item is just to the left of the item on the end. Because what happens is it goes through the loop from one, if for, if for a 10 item array, I set the initial value here to 9. So it would, it would go 1 to 9. So it compares 1 and 2 two and three, 
3 and 4, up to 9 and 10. And each one it finds out a position, it switches it. Then it comes back to the loop and starts at the top again, but it stops one shorter than where it was before because each time through the loop, you, you subtract one from the end point of the loop. So the first time it went one through nine, the second time it goes one through eight, one through seven, and so forth, comparing adjacent items each time. So like I said, if, if you study what's happening there or do this printout, you'll see that the largest item moved to the right, the second largest item moved to the second to the right, the third largest, the fourth, the fifth, and so forth, but there's a shortcut in there. Remember, I printed out once before sorting and then once after each pass. So this is before the sort, so it went one pass, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It only used eight passes through the loop instead of nine, and that's because when it finished this pass here, they were all in order. So then it said, did I make any changes that last pass? No, quit sorting, you're done. It's a shortcut. Depending on how the random numbers laid out, I've seen it go as low as three passes to finish the sort. You just have to look at how this works and run that test a few times to convince yourself what's really going on. Now, some comments on the, on the syntax here. This is fine syntax here because it's the start of the for loop, so you don't need delayed expansion here. You don't need a delayed expansion for the loop variable because each time through the loop that it uses the current value of that variable. However, j is a variable you change inside the loop. So if you use j anywhere else in the loop, you have to use delayed expansion to get the current value. Remember that delayed expansion says, don't follow your normal procedure, which is to expand everything in here when you first hit the four and use the same value of j throughout, no. I want to use the, the new value of J set here down here. That means I use the delayed expansion exclamation points. Same with everywhere where you see the delayed exclamation points. They're things that got changed in the loop. Now, the other thing is because of the way we're, we're having to Mickey Mouse the uh, pretend we're dealing with arrays when we're not, this syntax will only work if you use call in front of the set instruction. Then when you do that, you put an extra an extra percent sign on each side around the normal pair that would have been used if you didn't have to do this special syntax so there's an extra percent sign on each side here of and when you use a call set so I had to use a call set to set this variable from the array and a call set to set this variable from the array read up on uh, processing arrays when you have variable subscripts and you'll, you'll run into the fact you have to use a call set to get a value from the array. So now we go down here and we say, we look at the two values that we saved from the array, which were the adjacent values. We compare them and then we do use a delayed expansion. We do compare them and if they're out of position, we exchange them. And then if we made an exchange anywhere on all the passes through this loop, we set that flag. It says, okay, the last pass through the loop, we moved something. So we have to keep going. We can't quit early. So if you go through this on a pass and you didn't make any movement, everything was already where it belonged, you can quit. And that's what this test down here will say. If moved is still no, just quit. You set moved equals no before you made a pass through the loop. Then you made a pass through the loop. And if you made any changes, you set moved yes. So if you didn't make any changes again, you just quit. If you did make any changes, you may not be done. So now you find out, okay, we're subtracting one from last for each pass through the loop. So on the last pass, last will be one. If last is greater than one, we're going to keep going. Once we're completely done, we just return we don't have to pass a return value because we've been dealing with the parameter by reference. We've been modifying the original array as we go. So now we return and now we list out that same array after the sort and we find, yeah, it is sorted and here it is. 
And again, remember, I cut the array down to 10 so that we could see how the bubbling was going on here. Thanks for watching my video. If you like this video, please click my name, Thomas Wallace, to visit my channel page to watch my other videos.